hard to actually pick that up. And LGD not going to have many options on where they can attack the map in this early game. It is, once again, a lot more about the late game, but this time around, L JDG not only have the superior mid game, but they're scaling Ooh, yeah, scary. It, it looks real scary, especially at Kindred. It's one of those champions that scales exceptionally well as we head into game number two here. JDG wanting a 2-0. They're the ones that have to push forward in this mid game and LGD on the back of Peanut here have to make something happen. So we're at a point where JDG do feel like they have more options in the early game. Syndra's gonna have pressure in this mid lane. Once, especially you hit level three, you're available, all, all your spells are available to you and Kanavi can look to kind of influence this matchup. Bot lane will always be pushing in, so if you can get them some vision, you'll have constant priority through the bot lane. And top doesn't really matter. You have an Ornn, so again, let LGD keep sending pressure top. Even if you die, you should be able to win out more on the bottom half of the map, so when you're JDG, you went out in the early game, theoretically, mid game as well, and out scale. <laughs> <laughs> this is looking pretty good for JDG. The Colonel disagrees, though. He likes LGD's composition, apparently. He's given him a 53%, so we'll see whether Lyric or KFC is going to be correct on the analysis on this one. Like, the thing you have that about LGD's composition this time around, ooh. Is the support of fried chicken? <laughs> yes, but. Lies will still be able to go and disrupt the teamfight. Maybe you can set up something interesting like a Tempered Fate into, you know, a Wukong ultimate, find all your damage there, but you still have some disengage potential coming from this Yumi. Kindred ultimate as well, gonna provide a bit of safety and set up for JDG to find that room to play with. Take a look at the runes in the mid lane though. Yagao and Yuki both actually bringing a Comet to the mid lane. We've not seen much Comet Azir recently. We've been seeing it more, especially in these uh, long-range matchups where you're not going to be able to easily proc things like Halo Blades or Lethal Tempo. You can get bullied out. You take the Comet on the side of Syndra, though. Again, we do a lot of the time also see Electrocute coming out, but... Yeah, a lot of Phase Rush as well from Syndra's. True. But, uh, not in this matchup where you don't feel a lot of threat from the all-in, but if you did want it for the team fight, that's something you could pick up. I mean, y Yuki has been the one feeling threat so far in this lane. Is Yagao got a really nice scout of the week, and Yuki already obviously starting with the corruption potion, so he will be able to sustain himself back up. Kanavi doing kindred things right here, and he's looking for an invade. Peanut's gonna have his double buff though, and he's aware of where Ooh. Kanavi is. Kanavi's bitten off more than he can chew here, and he's a wolf for God's sake. Kramer now has to jump away for himself. Ignite used there from Killer. Yeah, this makes me wish we could have seen how the jungle starts went on level one because it looks like they had no idea where peanut was on the map makes me wonder if no we know they didn't fake leash bot lane because we saw the poke out from level one yep. so no fake leash or anything like that so kind of uh, misreading the game here perhaps expecting peanuts to do something as opposed to reading the map here Good bit of damage out from Killua and Kramer, but obviously the sustain there from Luma is going to make it very difficult to make any of that stick. And to be fair, this isn't a matchup we see all that often barred into Yumi. I would just expect in theory that Yumi can constantly poke out the bard. Shouldn't really be able to get in range yeah. with you just being able to throw out those Qs, but LGD having a good time in the spot lane so far. Yeah, I mean, one of the interesting things about that matchup as well is obviously as Yumi, most of the time you're sat on your AD carry, so Bard can't bind you both. If it's a straight 2v2 with no minions, Bard's not gonna find a binding. True. And another interesting thing, actually, nice. what's watching is Kanavi hovering around this top lane. Yeah, he wants to try and make a play here, but Lies is in a very safe position near his tower right now. Knockup not gonna come through, but Lies actually commits to this 1v1. It's all a bait. Lies, I think, reading this play. But going back to what we were talking about, another interesting thing about this draft is whenever you have Yumi, like you want to find pressure from your mid lane and then walk towards your bot lane through the river because Yumi's not really, not really, Yumi's not the type of champion who can just walk into river herself, walk up, meet up with you, and find that vision together. So it's going to be a lot more about Kanavi meeting up with Yigao, which he will have pressure in this mid lane matchup now that, again, can't hit a scatter of the week, try to combo into some damage from Kanavi, then look towards the bot side and give their bot lane some pressure. This is not very relevant to the analysis that you're running with here, but there's a lot of animals in this game. 
We've got a cat in the bottom lane. We've got a wolf and a lamb in the jungle. We've got a goat versus a monkey in the top lane. I feel like I'm watching a zoo. I mean, Azir is also a... Uh, Azir's a bird. Yeah, he's a... He's, he's a, a pigeon. Exactly. Something. He's probably not a pigeon, but he looks kind of like a pigeon. He's pigeon-like, pigeon-esque. He struts like a pigeon. And see, we can see how easily Killua himself can actually just leave bot lane, walk towards mid, and look to find this pressure himself. But JDG should know something's up by the fact that he's not showing on bottom wave. Wow, he's gonna. You just said he can't walk into the jungle <laughs> he alone. Shouldn't do that, yeah. I'm amazed he got away with that, honestly. But he's gonna be fine, and he's got a Yagao to jump to if he's in danger. Kanavi waiting just off the top side here of the play. But I think both teams decide this is not ideal. Like you pointed out, that was extremely dangerous. Had he walked into the members of LGD, you're obviously Yumi. You have no flash. You're just dead. Uh, this is not a pick we've actually seen JDG run with too much. They've picked it once before. It's something that, honestly, in the LPL, we haven't seen a ton of, but it's a pretty high priority in other regions. LEC especially. Love this Yumi pick. Uh, uh, especially. Ex especially, especially alongside go. the Ezreal. Third time's a charm. Now we do see Kanavi hovering mid, probably trying to find this pressure through the mid lane, but Yugi not going to give it to him, just going to play safely and hover bot side. So I want to revisit something we talked about earlier. We mentioned how LGD once again kind of have a scaling composition. There's a lot of mid game power for the side of JDG, but it's actually LGD that get the first Drake of the game this time. Yeah, and this goes back to what we saw earlier on in the bottom lane. Oh, Yuki's in trouble. Scatter the Week comes through and Zoom's roamed down as well. Yuki gets, oh, still gets hit. Good shot from Zoom, but obviously no follow-up available. The surprising thing is to see how heavily that the JDG bot lane has been pressured under their turret. But still, right now, Loken is sitting on a pickaxe compared to Kramer, who just has that cull. Yeah, Kramer just going to be farming up and, you know, it's kind of what you expect from an Aphelios, especially into this much poke and this much sustain. You're never really going to get a kill to stick, so just go for the farm up, go for the gold, make sure you're playing for later on in the match. But look at your minimap, we actually see Killua heading up towards the top side. Peanut is here, and with Syndra backing, Yugi should be in a position to follow up as well if they want to look for something on the top half of the map. Of course, Rift Herald's still not up for 30 seconds, though. Peanut's got Kindred's mark on him, I saw. Kanavi just placed that there. I think he wants a bit of a 1v1 in the jungle. And this is a bit of a quieter game than what we saw in game number one. While there weren't that many kills early on in game one, there was a lot of fighting. It just didn't lead to many kills. You see a lot of defensive vision as well coming out from JDG in their bot side. Look at where their two control wards are, and they're very wary of Peanut invading the bottom side jungle. Kanavi wants to make something happen though. He's got his sweeper and he's into this mid lane brush. Yuki playing very safe in terms of the positioning. He's got vision on the bot side, so he stays on the bot side. One thing we can start keeping our eyes on is LGD looking for a dive in the bottom side once Tempered Fate is up, being able to lock down that tower and bring four people bot and just shutting this Yumi out from the game would be great to see from LGD. Well, Dragon's gonna be up in just under three minutes And here. instead, they're going for Rift Herald. Yeah, that, I'm not really uh, interested in that one. Peanut going to be moving up to the top side and nothing from Kanavi here. And it's kind of crazy because Kanavi, we know him as this jungler that will match his opponent, generally speaking. And granted, he's playing a farming jungler. And we have seen games where Kanavi likes to farm, but it, he doesn't usually just concede everything like this. No, JDG have been a team that have been very... Very willing to contest neutral objectives, just feeling like they have the ability to team fight enemy team. Killer will force the flash here. Yuki as well. Gets his uh, conquering sands off to pull himself away. Killer with no flash available though. Magical journey. Yagao happy to follow. Gets stunned up against the wall, but he's gonna go down eventually. Last auto goes to Kanavi. Now towards the bottom lane. Suddenly, Kramer finds himself alone. Has the flash, has an exhaust as well. He's in a 1v4 right here. Yagao, happy to step on forward. The minions tanking and down he goes. Lumao tanks the tower and it's an easy kill for JDG. <laughs> Surprisingly, we actually see JDG the ones to go for that bottom lane dive, but leaves LG in a spot where they probably could just Rift Herald this mid lane and should be able to break this one open pretty early. They 
might just be able to finish this one off. Still oh. half of a plate there. There is a response from JDG. They want to force the plate, but the tower goes down. What is the answer now? JDG go in. Yuki dashes away. Peanut there, but he's tanky as well. Stun doesn't go through. Mountain Dread will do some damage, but it's not enough to finish him. And it's actually Kanavi that's in trouble now. Has to get away. The dot ticking and a last auto from Yagao. They find one onto Peanut. And now they have to try and get away from it. Yuki can't follow for a kill. Killer, we're just going to get vision. JDG are able to pick up the kill, but getting that mid lane turret. Oh, Yagao could be in trouble here. Dashes forward. He doesn't have any mana, and he's going to surely fall. The healing from Yumi is absurd, and he somehow survives. Yeah, Yumi coming in so clutch right there, but still LGD being able to pick up that mid turret is so nice. When you look at JDG's composition, things like the Syndra and the Ezreal, you are going to have a lot of wave clear going into the mid and late stages of the game. So being able to break that one open early and get all this map control on both sides of the rift is massive. And it's the fact that they nearly break the tier 2 as well. Like it got the second charge while that fight was all going on. And it means that next time around the LGD get priority, they could just finish the tower off. It's also going to be pretty big with how far they can push in the mid lane, but we see here just LGD overstaying and the crucial part of this is Zoom walking down from the top lane. He did have push. Is able to hit land this ult and then Yigao just oh. landing the auto. Beautiful. That's what counts. Literally flashed at the same time as Peanut, but managed to get that A click through. And it's another kill for Syndra. Bear in mind when we look at this mid lane, Syndra already 2 0 and 1. Yagao is looking fantastic. We do see Zoom heading out base. He does still have TP, but JDG not going to look to contest this one. No, second Dragon now going the way of LGD. It's the opposite of what we saw in game number one. And now, if you're LGD, you can look for these plays where you can just constantly push out this mid wave so far that Yagao's going to be stuck so close to his turret, and then you can turn to either side of the map. We've already set up that they can try to look for something like a bottom lane dive with the Tempered Fate, but when the second Rift Herald is coming up, Kilo is just so easy for him to leave bot lane, head up towards that top side, but... Kanavi. Oh, Kanavi's looking for a play onto Yuki. Dashes out, but here's a flash as well. Empress Divide, Ooh. but Kanavi hops over it. He's not going anywhere. Finds the kill. Has his own ult available, the Lamb's Respite, to keep him safe. Heal denied from Killua. Living up to his name with a kill of his own. And he magical journeys away. In comes Peanut, though, as the fight is going to be extended. Yagao with a nice scatter of the week. Keeps the Cyclone away from him. But Kramer's here to head off the play. Yagao will fall. Oh, actually, he's got a Yumi as well. Two kills, in fact. Yeah, Yagao just left in a very awkward position. Seems like they felt like they could opt into that one because Zoom was walking down. But it didn't matter. You were left in a bad place. And overall, great roam from Killua to start that one off. Really, really nicely done from the side of LGD. And they're starting to pull ahead. They're ahead in gold. They're ahead in drakes. They're ahead in towers. It's all looking fantastic for LGD. And I felt like... JDG were the ones with the early game advantages. What is going wrong for them right now? And we just keep seeing kind of small details of these team fights go wrong. We saw them kind of lose out bot early, which relegated Kanavi to playing towards the top half of the map. They weren't able to find any picks in the mid lane. They didn't even try to use the advantage or priority that Syndra can get to turn that in the side lanes. We just saw Kanavi consistently farming and not even looking towards these neutrals. And he's going to continue to get that farm down. But when you actually look at the junglers comparatively right now, they're going to be even on farm. Once this camp is finished, they will be completely even on 83. And so you have to wonder, was all of that time farming really worth it? Because this trundle is certainly not going to go away. And I do think this does just start from the early game of him looking for that play. It does seem like just mismanaging where Peanut was, where Peanut could be on the map. And even early game ganks, you don't necessarily want to gank for an Ezreal Yumi, right? You want to build up vision later in the game so they can try to get down this poke and harass. It would be a lot more about playing through your mid lane. And, and let's talk a little bit about how Yumi will function later on into the game, because it's important to mention that back in the day, I'm sure you all watched Worlds in 2019, Yumi was a poke machine you know this whole garen yumi thing was all about yumi dealing damage she's been changed a lot and if you haven't seen her recently it's much more about the healing now yep that's what luma is gonna offer you know and going to over to lgd side i think to recognize is that Killua has played on this part so well it's constantly left the bot lane and 
done a good job in denying JDG options to find pressure through mid because he's constantly been hovering around this mid lane. Always looking for a play. Yigao. Trying to step forward, but with very little vision, he needs to be cautious. Tower plays very, very heavily in favor of LGD this time around. All five plates in the mid lane shared evenly between Peanut and Yuki. And once again, Killa going to be able to just walk up first. So LGD getting first track on the search Charles, but this time Lumao is here. He is on Kanavi. We're going to have a contest here. Yigao going to be able to spot it with the Scryer's Bloom. 4,000 on the Herald. Lies the first top laner here, though. You think maybe this Herald will go down. <laughs> Kanavi goes in, sees better of it, and goes back out again. Herald goes to the way of Peanut. They trade it for a tier one in the bottom lane. That was pretty confusing because you can see the rest of the members of JDG backing off, realizing that Kramer can head up. But Zoom still using the call of the Forge God. Didn't really make much sense. Yeah, maybe just trying to threaten a play? I don't know. Kilua, in the meantime, feels like tanking a couple of tower shots, I guess. But you're threatening <laughs> a play while Loken is showing on the bottom wave. Yeah, I mean, Loken is definitely not going to be a part of any of those shenanigans as he was just pushing away, shoves the wave all the way under the tier two. And importantly, while the play does go the way of JDG, Loken was behind in CS for most of this game. He was about 20 CS down earlier on. Now he's going to have a 10 CS lead because he spent so long in his own there. But going to what's happening on the map, LGD were able to get those resets first, so they're going to be able to get vision for this dragon and leave JDG in a very uncomfortable position where they're going to walk into LGD blind. It's going to be difficult for them, and especially with Loom out on this Yumi as well. It's difficult to get vision. You need someone else to go in with you. As you rightly said earlier, Yumi can't just walk into the jungle on her own. Tempered fate, but you mentioned it in the draft. It's difficult to land onto an Ezreal. Yep, not going to find that plan. They are trying to set up picks, but at least on the side of LGD, you still do have the Rift Herald, so... Oh, Loka jumps forward aggressively with the Arcade Shift. Ooh. Has to flash for himself and use the cleanse. Still, Ezreal, very mobile. Not going to get picked off, but LGD can just look to start this dragon. Peanut stunned, flashes away from the knockup. True Shot Barrage goes wide. And once again, Loken eing forwards aggressively. He's happy to be aggressive because he's got the healing from this Yumi. Lies goes in. Zoom is not the ideal target for him. LGD setting up for a 5v5 right now. They want to go for this one. Yigao's too far forward, flashes away from the Cyclone. Big ultimate use for LGD, but they're happy to trade for a flash as Zoom. Won't be able to snipe anyone. Lies goes in with a second Cyclone. Knocks up everybody, but he can't finish off the kills, and he goes down instead. Loken with the first kill of the fight. And I think that might just be the end of everything. <laughs> and without meandering this time through my point, LGD had Rift Herald the whole time. They could have just put that down somewhere to create this kind of artificial tempo and then move on to Dragon first without JDG having a good way to answer. They don't do that. We saw fights continuously almost start up, but... Lies tries to go in to set it up, isn't able to. Lyric, I've just had a nightmare vision. I've, I've, I'm shaking, I've got fever symptoms here on the desk because I've just had a vision of four Ocean Drakes for JDG with a Yumi, with oh, a Kindred, with an, Orn. with an Orn. If they get four Drakes this game, they're going to be unkillable. Loken is going to be able to get away. This time he's caught out by the Tempered Fate, but the rest of his team's here to protect him. Killer is in trouble himself, and one more Q finishes the job. Double knockup from Zoom now. His Lambs Rest Bite keeps Kanavi safe. Kramer's coming in from the side, and he's trying to get onto Loken, but... Oh no, Lumao! He's separated from the team! He's taken down. Kramer gets one now. His Zoom exhausted, but still terrifying on the Orn. He's going to chase down Kramer, who's not having a fun Ooh. time right now. Zoom forced to flash away here as Kramer manages to escape. Kramer just playing that so yeah. well. Of course, having to burn the flash in the end, but it doesn't matter. Was dealing so much damage, almost ended up killing Zoom for full HP. Good effort there from Kramer. And we talked about it before. He's played a good amount of this Aphelios, and he looks like one of the more proficient Aphelioses in the whole LPL. Yeah, he's looks so great on this champion. There's a lot of highlight moments. Even in their loss against FPX in their last series, he was one of the bright spots on the team in that game. And going back, again, really struggling the first half of the split, having to play with Chance. When they did bring Killua in, he's looked much better. Getting back to that form from last year that we knew he was like a top three, top four AD carry. Yeah. 
He's looking good so far this game. And importantly, this time around, he gets to go for that IE early on. He gets to follow it up with a Zeal. He's not had to focus on getting a Hex Drinker before finishing a Tier 3 item. But still, we look across and look at Loken's items. Has the Triforce and the yep. Mana already. It's going to get to a point where this Ezreal is scary. and can really just look to 1v9 this game, honestly. He big. He big. Well... 2v8, two, two I would say, because he's going to have a pet cat on his shoulder to I mean, keep him it, invincible. Not even 1v9, right? He has teammates. The rest of them are playing well. That was kind of insulting. 1v5. 1v5, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No one is dragging him down. I think when you look at the scoreboard for the side of JDG, it's fair to say that they're doing all right. Yeah. Harold's going to be cleared away here. Does get the charge onto the tier 2, but they're trading because Zoom is in the bottom side right now. Can they finish the trade, though? The rest of JDG have answered. No tower will go down for the side of LGD. Loken is brave on this Ezreal. Braver than I am. And now he wants to try and find a kill. Kramer it's gets tagged. I was going to say it's because they see Yuki and Lai still in the mid lane, but... CP being channeled. They want to force a play here. Zoom has Call of the Forge God available. But he's not going to call that Forge God just yet. He's waiting for a better opportunity. Baron is up. Tier 1 in the top lane is still available for JDG2. Still, LGD were able to get the Tier 2 in the mid lane, so we're able to find an advantage there by the way JDG decided to allocate those resources. Yep. We have Dragon coming up in two minutes, and that's where I expect our eyes to go towards next. If you're LGD, you probably could just ignore this turret, set up bottom side vision, make sure you get like a ward on Baron so they don't rush it. They do have double AD carry. It's kind of an interesting trade, isn't it, when you look at the towers? Because it was tier two for tier two, and then a tier one on top. But that mid lane tier two is going to be so much more valuable than any of the other towers taken here. In the meantime, we've got to fight Killua. Going to be chased on down. Tempered Fate onto himself. Saves him from Yagao, but one more Q. Oh no, he's still surviving. Caretaker's trying to keep him alive, but Zoom finishes the kill. He sacrificed himself to do it, though. Will fall. Oh, Yuki barely lives. I'd still say that's a massive win for JDG in the fact that Loken and Lumao weren't even there. They were coming from base, and Zoom so tanky, able to find a return kill. And again, neither of these deaths really affect the Dragon Timer. Still up in one minute, you're both going to get on the map soon enough to get Vision down yeah. to look for this play. I mean, it's it's a positive and a negative, right, for JDG, because on one side, it's like, hey, you nearly won the fight, and two of your guys weren't there. But then on the other side of that, it's like, why are you fighting if two of your guys aren't there? That doesn't make any sense. No way to analyze it better. Doesn't make sense. I've, uh, I've started part-timing as a filler caster on, you know, night shifts. Just just something small for the, for the start, and I'll see so, if I can uh, it. So, are you going to cast the LEC tonight? I'm thinking about it. We'll see. I've messaged Quickshot. He's not going back to me yet, so who knows? Probably not, though, for the final. Ooh. Here we go. We've got another pick onto Killua. No tempered fate this time, my friend. Great rush play coming out from Yigao, just waiting there, expecting someone from the side of LGD to walk up. Now they've numbers advantage. Kramer. Hey, at least he's got his crooks. That's he's, all he cares about. You're a right. kindred. You're not going to die. Peanut is going to have to flash away from this on Martin Dread. Is there true shot? Just goes wide. Peanut survives. Oh, oh. Konami! You still at all? I feel let down. I just set up that he's not going to die. I don't know why Peanut was waiting there when all know. the members of JG are on the map. I don't know what's going on anymore. Zoom now getting chased down. He's just baiting, though. Dragon's being done in the meantime. There's a second ocean that's about to go the way of JDG. They don't have a jungler. They shouldn't just get that. But we see LGD pinging up towards Bear. They have Aphelios uh, with Azir. I see what's oh, happening here. Severum. Oh, Look at it go eyes. down. Look how fast they can burn through this one. Zoom has to contest. He's got to go in. Loken's arriving. Yagao is here. Kanavi isn't anywhere near. This... Oh, this... No, they got the kills. Yeah. They didn't get the Baron. I thought they stole it then. I thought Yagao was a hero, but he's still going to be a hero because he gets two and Loken finds one as well. It's a triple for Yagao and Lies has to try and escape, but I don't think you can run from the goat and the cat. This killer combo is biblical. And now Lies has to run off with his monkey tail between his legs. So overall, they are going to... Ooh, are they? They're going to just dive this one. They're not... I mean, how are you ever going to kill him? It's Yumi Ord. He's I love JDG's play here. Sending Kidron in. Doesn't use the Lambs despite on purpose. Gives him that false confidence to go on the Baron. Knows the rest of the team will clean it up. No Barons on the side of LGD. A ton of kills for JDG. And the parable of the goat and the kitten comes true once again. And everyone knows the the, the meaning of that story. The moral of the story was you can dive any tower you want. We see that, again, JDG have a ton of AoE on their side. 
Ooh, we see Elias going in the back, so this is all you got. All of it. That's Scatter of the Week, the ultimate all him. Loken CC'd up, Zoom CC'd up as well. They just have enough damage to finish them off. But Yagao, we keep talking about his Dude. LeBlanc, but his Syndra. Yagao's a monster, man. Yagao, I don't know. He's fighting for best mid laner in the LPL right now. He's looking for that title. Rookie is going to be giving him a hard time, though. So is doing B. There's plenty of contenders. We'll see in playoffs whether or not he can go for that. One thing that's great about Yagao is it feels like his main champions are really LeBlanc, Azir, Syndra, and Zoe, yeah. which is almost always meta. Yeah. So. Uh, never gonna have a bad time if you're a gal. He's, he's like the opposite of Teachama. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Unbannable, always meta. He's very happy. Now, if he had like a rise in that pool, it's like, oh, yeah. you are always meta. Maybe he does. Maybe he's True. just secretly practicing. I mean, right now it's not rise meta, so if he did, we would know. But maybe rise will rise to the meta at some point soon. We'll have to wait and see. Let's take a recap here because JDG have found themselves with the advantage now. 4,000 gold, two drakes on the books as well. And you can see, everyone's just recalling the bottom lane for LGD right now. Luckily for them, there's no minions in this mid lane. They tried to set up a pick onto Yagao, but I was going to say that one thing that's different about this game is you really don't have any pressure in the side lanes coming out from JDG. Your composition is a lot more about grouping up as five, standing in front of that objective and whittling it down with the Ezreal Yumi. So LGD are going to try to find an avenue into this game with Lies pushing in the side lane. And Avi just going to jump straight onto Killua here. Let's see if he remembers his Arky this time around. He's not going to need it for now. Kramer takes a true shot barrage. Everyone grouping up here from the side of JDG on towards this top lane. And you can see the sustain Lumao is already offering. He's got an Ardent Sensor. He's got his Athenes as well. This Yumi is going to make people very difficult to deal with. Look at Lies though. Lies coming in from this side. Wants to try and find a way to get this Ultima off. Four members strong. For JDG, Zoom is nowhere near right now. I don't know if he's got TP available or not. Yagao here, oh. Tempted Fate, only gonna land on the Lies. Oh, it's a disaster. Zoom comes in, teleports into everyone. Lies can't get the Cyclone, it's only onto one. JDG, they've got the disengage. Lies goes back in though, he somehow gets everyone. How do you get hit by that? Now they're trying to turn it around though. The healing is here, the sustain is here. Kanavi has to back away, Zoom is getting low. Killua. And Kramer doing a lot of work on the back line as Yuki comes up with a kill. Ultimately, that was a mistake from Yagao just positioning too far forward because that fight started so bad from LGD. We talked about last game how their coordination was so on point. This time, Kill and Lies not on the same page at all. Yeah. Actually gave JG the space to play the front to back team fight, but Yagao walking too far forward. How on earth does Lies get a Cyclone onto everyone there? That was nuts. And Kramer. <laughs> Uh, you won the fight! Kramer, you won the fight! Why you gotta be greedy? I Why remember me and Dagda were talking about this, that I think I put Kramer third or fourth on my ADC tier list, but he said the thing that makes him skeptical, skeptical is the fact that Kramer has done this a lot this split, and uh, yeah, we see it again. I mean, we said it earlier on in the day that Kramer, when he looks good, he looks great, but sometimes, I don't know, sometimes he just wanders in. So, they don't time this right at all, but still cannot be wasting the lamps for Spite. Keep your eyes on the Gao, Yagao, I'm sorry, getting getting hit with the Spell Shield down, and now Lies going in once again, just gets on top of him. Yagao walking too far forward, they do end up deleting him, and now hits the rest of the team. Sets up LGD pretty well. Looks a bit, a bit sketchy right there, but still they continue walking forward. Yuki just able to free hit, but with Kramer going down, JDG get a third ocean. My, my vision started to come true. This is... I've always wanted to be a prophet, but not like this. Not like this. Three ocean drinks now for JDG. Four and a half minutes till the next one. And they are going to be licking their lips and rubbing their hands together at the idea of that. But I just want to quickly talk about the scoreboard before the next massive fight kicks off again. Look at Loken right now. Three items on the Ezreal. The Triforce is upgraded. Four, zero, and three. He is loving life. Even the Executioner's Calling, I really like coming out right now with the Sustain, of course, in Aphelios' Kit and coming out from the Trundle. So, I don't know how you die right now if you're the side of JDG. They'll find a way. The last couple of fights if, have proven okay, that they I will know find how they a die. way. If Yagao walks too far forward in front of every member of LGD, he's going to die. Zoom, going to find the Call of the Forge. Got True Shot as well. Ooh. Kramer's in trouble, but the Pillar stops the knockup. Zoom is tanky and walks away with his life. That's going to be the first kill. Down onto the Bard. 
Kramer slowed, and they're trying to chase up for more. What? Logan, what are you doing, you madman? He gets a kill anyway. Double on the Ezreal. What was that? Now the Cyclone comes on in as well. Kanavi falls, but Zoom answers the kill. Logan jumps forward once again. This man fears nothing. Triple on the Ezreal. Feeling really confident with Lumao on him, and just that one flash was absolutely insane, but JG making it work out. Spamming the emotes for a bit of class. I like it. Beautiful stuff. And this is why Ezreal Yumi is terrifying. Now onto the Baron. And once again, JDG just using Zoom to push out the side lane and rotate over isn't something you'd expect from the Orm, but right now Wukong can't deal with him in the side lane, so it does make sense always rotating first. And actually that play, it was the Syndra in the side lane. They started it off 4v5, actually. So ignore what I'm saying. It's completely wrong. They didn't go for the setup. <laughs> they just had the damage. They just had an inc I mean, I just talked about it. He was 4-0 and 3. I was like, look, is it three items? He's really strong right now. And Loki's like, I agree. I'm going in. I remember watching that thinking, Syndra's not here. Just be patient. Why are you guys engaging this already? See on your mini-map. Syndra, not here. Zoom tries to go in, doesn't hit the engage. But still, Peanut is trapped in the middle of your team. And then we see just Killa left in such a bad position. And Loken does get in here, does get chained out. And Loken's flash right here. Not flash, it's E. Very good, has to flash out immediately. But hey. still... He got the kill, though. That's the important thing. He got the kill on the Zidra. And Zoom and Kanavi on the other end of that fight, killing lies. Oh, Loken with the point-and-click Mystic shots. I love watching LPL Ezreals. It's just so damn fun. 7-0 and 3 now. Loken is looking unstoppable. And with two minutes until that soul will spawn, JDG have their foot on the accelerator. Like, if LGD don't feel confident taking a fight like that where it's a 5v4 and you know Syndra shouldn't be there at that point from where she was relative to the wave when you last saw her, when are you going to be confident to take a fight? Because you're really relying on JDG misstepping and finding a pick with Tempered Fate, but you're at a point where you can't even really find pressure through the side lanes anymore. You've got two AD carries to deal with, but they might have dealt with one already. Kanavi will be stunned up. Can they finish him before the ult? The answer's no. Pina is going to be in trouble in the meantime. Both junglers could go down here. Kanavi, Cyclone, but still alive. Lumao makes that so. Zoom disrupting everyone and finds a kill 1v4. Lies somehow surviving for now, but he will fall to Kanavi in the end. It's going to be two for one so far. Zoom the absolute MVP of the fight. Yeah, Zoom doing such a good job continuously zoning off multiple members, but you are an Ezreal Yumi with a Baron buff. You can just keep going. And all they need to do is set this up so they can go to Dragon in one minute's time. Look how nicely synced up the Dragon timer and the Baron buff are. As soon as this Baron falls off, they've got a present waiting for them. And at this point, with lives being down, you have no way of getting into the fight against JDG. Forget the Dragon. Let's just take inhibitors. Loken can just walk up. There's still three people here from LGD, but they have to contest the mid lane. This honestly, if they can force something, this could be the game here for JDG. No Tempered Fate, no Wukong, you have no way of getting on top of JDG. And the Ezreal range, just too much, and the damage at this point, right? Yeah. He's doing so much damage. You have fourth Ocean Drake coming up in 20 seconds. They're not going to force anything here. I thought the way Logan Ooh. was positioned, I thought they were going to force the fight. Maybe they found it anyway. Peanut goes way too far forward. Tempered Fate onto Logan, but he's going to be fine. <laughs> Killua just goes down. Kanavi has to flash away. Moonlight Vigil, Cyclone on the back line from Lies. He's knocked up the carries, but Loken's still fine. Kanavi survives, and Lies is all out of cooldowns. He's going to fall now. No more monkey business from you. Yagao's here. Loken wants to chase, though. He's not done just yet. The slow, not quite going to land. But oh. oh, my days. The damage is disgusting. The minion wave survives. Oh, it saves Kramer here, but everyone's so low. Loken won't let him escape here. Charges up forward. There's Zoom as well. He'll get the kill with the Sunfire. And Peanut, he knows it's all over. Drops the emote, but Loken finishes him off. And JDG end this one in style. I love that LGD make the same mistake they did oh. last game. Yuki oh, just about gets onto the fountain. No Infernal Soul this time, so he survives. But Loken is happy to keep dishing the damage out right here. This is going to be Gabe, and in a stylish way as well. 25 to 10, and JDG, they continue their playoff dreams. And if FPX lose, they could be second seed.